Hey everyone, Wes here for Family Gamer TV and today we're going to be taking a look at Project Spark, which is Microsoft's game creation software that's available on Xbox One and PC. It's a free download for those platforms, but be aware that there are some in-app purchases there to help you expand the experience, uh, but a lot of that stuff you can unlock just through playing and creating within Project Spark itself. So my son and I have been having a go and seeing what we can cook up and we got the first of our videos on Project Spark for you today. So uh, let's have a look what we got for you. Specifically, we're going to try and build a fetch quest for you. So a very simple type of role playing game mechanic uh, where you go and approach a non-player character, he gives you a mission, you go and find something, you pick it up, you bring it back and you give it to him. So uh, my son Joe's is here with me today. Say hello Joe. Hello. Now Joe's been getting familiar with the interface, uh, so he knows his way around. So he's going to drive and I'm going to talk and uh, we'll get some input from Joe as we go. So Joe, take us in to create mode. So as you could see there on that front page, uh, we've got create mode, we've got play mode, marketplace, now champion's quest to do. And uh, we're just doing the create mode because obviously we want to build something. Now, the more you build and the more you play around in Project Spark, I think you earn credits. That's right, isn't it, Joe? Well, there's these daily quest things that, like, um, you pl you place terrain for one minute or something. I get that a lot. Um, so yeah, there's daily things that you have to complete, and then you get a few credits and stuff. But there's also tickets, which are more rare, but you have to buy with real money. So uh, the game itself or the tool itself rather is free but there are things you can earn to help you get stuff um joe what do you fancy hills flats i think we should go with hills okay and then we get uh, a couple of choices of a different terrain types which one are you going to go with joe i'll go with forest because empty world's a bit boring sounds cool and those trees do look pretty funky um, and then we get a choice of the kind of sky that we want. Uh, so we've got morning, nebula, and day. Uh, Joe, pick whichever one you like. Ooh, that's pretty funky. So we have a forest world um, set in a galaxy far away. And we need a couple of things to make this work. So we need a player character. We need a non-player character. And we also need an object. Now, to start with, we need to pick a few different items. So we've got an option here between uh, a different type of hero. What we actually want is a third person hero. So if we can keep scrolling. Oh no, this is just our, uh, this isn't our brain type. This is our person type. And we've got a few options here, you can see we could be an arctic fox. I fancy that woodland ranger female though, so let's uh, try her. And um, we get to place her, but she can start exactly where she is. Now here's, here's the options I was thinking about. We get a pick between different types of brains for our character and those brains mean that um, they have certain specific controls that allow them to do certain specific things so here you've got the twin stick shooter brain third person adventurer and 2d side scroller well for a quest i think a third person adventurer would be pretty perfect so we'll take that and that's our main character so we can take her for a spin or we can do some editing um, Joe, take take our woodland uh, ranger for a spin. I'm assuming she can jump, can she? What other stuff has she got up her sleeve? Just as I saw, just as I show, showed you, um, she can throw fireballs. And she can punch. And then she can c kind of like dodge. So show us what makes this character tick, Joe. Let's have a look at this character's brain. So you put the game into edit mode um, and you can flick between being able to paint things in the world, build things, or play with characters' brains. So here you can see the brain in detail and all sorts of different aspects from its health meter um, to what happens when you press certain buttons. 
So there's loads of loads of options there within the brain, and you can tinker with all of that. You can change absolutely everything, which is brilliant. Um, you're in full control here. But what we need is a non-player character. So we need somebody we can go and talk to. So Joe, can we add someone into the world that we can interact with? So Joe's going to bring up his options here. So we've got objects, we've got characters, and a vast array of other things we can put into the world. Uh, you can see all these characters we've got here. Loads of different choices from squirrels to Codian scouts to yetis. Um, Joe, which one do you fancy? So he's he's going to pick which one? Um, I'll go with a woodland ranger male as we're a woodland ranger female. Sounds good. Fits the world. It would look rather strange to have a yeti in a uh, woodland world. So uh, we get to place them. And we'll put them somewhere else on the map, maybe a bit further away from our character. Oh, and he's gone through the scenery. And you've got full control over the height and even the size of the character. You can make them into giants if you want. Um, and we've gone off the side of the map. Just maybe plonk it down there. Are going to make him a bit bigger? Don't make him too big. We need to be able to say, see what he's got to say. There we go. That's that's a nice size. So drop him down. Where are you going to put him? Where are you going to put him? Trying to work out which button <laughs> drops him down, I think. Oh, you want to rotate him in the right direction. Good idea. How do you lower him? Oh, that's it. There we go. Pop him down. Perfect. Okay, so can we have a look at his brain? So here you can see uh, this is a ranger's brain. He's got loads of different options. Um, but we don't need really any of this. So we're going to clear out his brain. I'm going to give him a brain wipe. And we're just going to give him a couple of simple things that we want him to do. So... We need him to interact with a couple of things, but first, before we do, we need the object that he wants in the environment. So, I think, Joe, you had an object in mind, didn't you? Yeah, I had the, in mind the Hakon Sword. So let's take a look at that, bring that up for us, and we'll put that somewhere in the world. And this is a special sword that comes with the starter pack. You can see a load of items here that you get. So there you've got uh, Hakon's Sword or Hakon's Epic Sword. You can't get Hakon's Epic Sword until you complete his um, Champion Challenge. Um, which is, I think you unlock it at a certain level, but I'm only at level 5. But I don't think I'm at the right level yet. Okay, so we'll just go with a regular Hakon Sword. So pick that and go and uh, place that somewhere in the environment. Maybe not too far away, otherwise we'll be charging all over the landscape trying to find it and make it bigger as well so we can see it. Okay, so Joe's going to place this down somewhere. That'll do. I think that's big enough. We shouldn't miss that. Let's lower it down a bit. It's in the little middle of a clearing there. Nice. Okay, now... The sword itself needs to react in certain ways, so is there a brain on the sword already? There is, and that says uh, if we interact with it, it picks it up and stuff, so that's basically the kind of things that we want. Um, so I think we can leave the sword, I don't think we need to add anything to that at the moment. But what we do need to do is tell our non-player character how to react and how to give us a quest. So uh, zip back to our well, the character, Joe, wherever you put him. I don't know where you put him. There he is. Okay. And we need to give him some brain elements. So, Joe, take us into his brain. So, as you can see, it's all blank from when we deleted everything out earlier. And we're going to make him react in certain ways and do certain things so we can build this quest up. So the first thing we need to do is have him react to our player. We want him to give the quest to our player. So he needs to be able to detect when the player's around. 
So we have the option here for sensors. And if we go into there, we can pick detect. Uh, we need to tell him to detect the player. So we need to add that in as well. So here you can see we can pick the player as an option. So now when the player is detected, we need to do something. And we want him to say something. So if we go in here, we can pick say as an option. And we'll just say something like, uh, please, can you find my sword? So Joel will type that in. So this basic fetch quest, uh, what we'd like to happen is as our player approaches, he'll say a message to us. This will tell us what we need to do, and in this case, find his sword. We'll then go off, find the sword, pick it up, bring it back, give it to him, and hopefully he'll be able to hold it and maybe even say thank you as well. We're done. So that's the first piece of the puzzle. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need him to react to the sword. So what's he going to do when the sword appears? So we need to give him the sword. And there's a couple of ways you could do that. One of the easiest ways, though, is if he comes into contact with the sword, that he can take possession of it. So there's an option in sensors to bump. So this means that if the character comes into contact with the sword or with, with, with whatever we say next, um, he'll then react to it. So we pick bump, but now we need to pick the sword as an option. And you can pick objects for your environment with this in-world picker. Now we just need to go and find it. I do wish it just listed them. There, there should be a, just a list. Um, but... Uh, Um, actually there is, you can go in, there's this option called the gallery picker as well and you can just pick it from the gallery of things. Okay, cool. Well, looks like we found the sword anyway, so we can do it this way. But there's a list there too for you. So when Joe picks the sword, there we go, it's a right trigger on that. That's it. So there we go. Now we're bumping hack on sword. Well, when we do bump that, what we want to do is pick it up. So we want to. Our NPC wants to take possession of it. So I think in objects you have the option to pick up. Do you? No, not in. Um, yes. There we go. So we can pick up. And the object you want to pick up is it. Okay, so now we know that when we bump into the non-player character, he should pick up the sword. But what we also want to do is say thank you. So what we need to do here is we need to add Hakon's sword again. So if we pick this with the in-world picker again. And I think I remembered now there is one difference between the in-world picker and the gallery picker. If you use the gallery picker, it's not the actual instance of the sword that you're reacting with or the object. It's, uh, it's a general instance. So here we're talking specifically about this sword that we've got in the environment. And what we're going to tell it to do is when Hakon's sword is in our equipment, so if we go to objects, inventory, or rather in, held in inventory, then we can say thank you. Because then we know that he's got the sword and he's going to say thank you. So Joe's going to type that in and also after he said thank you or as well as saying thank you really what we want him to do is also equip that sword. So we've got the thank you. That's all in there. Now can we add an and? So there should be an option to modifiers. Is it modifiers? No. It's timing and logic, but that doesn't seem to be there. Okay, so add it as a separate line then. Do the same thing again. When hack on sword held in inventory. And then we can do um, equip. So the way we do this is we pick equip and we pick hack on sword. And then again, in world picker. 
like that. And there we go. So that should mean that when we approach a player um, and we don't have the sword, he will tell us to go and find it. Uh, when we collect the sword and bring it back, if we bump into him with the sword, he will take it off us, he will say thank you, and he will equip it. At least that's the hope. Do you think it's going to work, Joe? Yeah. Well, let's give it a go. I think that's everything we need to do, actually. So if we now test this out, we'll see how we get on. So, Joe, if you put this in test mode. And the first thing, obviously, we need to go and find the NPC. Hopefully not... Oh, look, there's the sword. Stay away from the sword. Don't pick the sword up first, because that would just ruin the quest completely. So, where is he? He's somewhere on the coastline. There he is. There we go. So, there's the first piece of code. Please, can you find my sword? Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. Now, if we go and grab that sword and take it to him, let's see if our code works. That is a big sword. Joe, try swiping around with that sword. Wow, look at that. Okay, don't don't hit him with it. Right. So, hold on, don't go. Oh, don't get too close. Right. So, if we give him the sword, what happens? We bump into it. Oh, so he took it and he equipped it. And if you caught it just briefly flashing up on screen he did say thank you uh, now Joe move away from him just enough that that message goes away okay so he doesn't still say it so the problem we've got here is that the message flashes up but only briefly and then it's replaced by the please can you find my sword message or nothing so what we really need to do is I guess find a way of turning our text into a variable so that we can replace it once he gets hold of the sword. So that he doesn't say the please can you find it once he's got the sword. I might know how to do it. If there's an option that says not held in inventory, so we might have timing and logic where, so when bump hack on sword and hack on sword not held in inventory, say it. And then it when it is held in inventory, say thank you. I think we've quite adequately proven how to do a fetch quest or at least a very simple fetch quest for a sword in project spark pretty straightforward i think you'll agree not very many uh, controls in there that you needed to add in um, but if you have an idea of how we could do the variable and get that working to replace that text please leave us a comment and let us know um, and maybe you could uh, create your own fetch quest with it and uh, send us a link to that and, and we'll try it out so as you can probably tell, my son has a whole lot of fun playing with Project Spark. It's one of his go-to games, if you can call it a game, at the moment. He just loves creating that stuff. He's kind of getting into coding himself at the moment, dabbling with Scratch, and he sees Project Spark as a kind of extension of that. Obviously, it's very similar to the kind of stuff you see with Disney Infinity's Toy Box, I guess with Minecraft, and uh, all sorts of uh, game creation software that you can get at the moment. Uh, but there's something about the way Microsoft have implemented it that makes it very easy to use. And he definitely enjoys it. So you can check that out now. Remember, it's a free download. So uh, go and have a look if you've got an Xbox One or PC. And let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, and of course, if you've been creating some stuff, we want to see it. So send those links over to us to show us your creations. And, uh, and we'll take a look. But that's it for today. Uh, so stay tuned for more from Family Gamer TV.